Okay, hello everyone. My name is uh, Wen Xin Huan from Naga University. On behalf of the organization team, we would like to present to you the results of the Voice Conversion Challenge 2020, Intralingual Semi-Parallel and Cross-Lingual Voice Conversion. So first, I will briefly introduce the tasks database and the timeline for this year's challenge. And then uh, Shanghai Tian from National University of Singapore will give a breakdown of the participants and the submitted systems. And then finally, Yi Zhao from National Institute of Informatics Japan will talk about the subjective evaluations and the analysis of the this year's challenge. And then finally, she will give a conclusion. All right, so as we mentioned in the very first of this workshop, uh, BCC is a biannual scientific event that tries to compare different BC technologies by looking at a common database. So this year, we introduced two tasks. The first task is intralingual semi-parallel voice conversion. So when we say intralingual, mean that the source and the target languages are the same. And in this year, we set it to English. And then when we say semi-parallel, we mean that among the source and the target training sets, a subset of them is parallel, meaning that the contents are the same, while the rest of them are non-parallel, meaning that they are of different contents. Although that methods for tackling non-parallel BC data can be directly used. Uh, we encourage participants to utilize this small subset of parallel data so that they can enhance their results. The, test, the second task is the cross-lingual voice conversion. So here the source language is still English, but we have Mandarin, German, and Finnish as the target languages. So during training, we provide these training sentences from these languages of the target speakers. And during conversion, given an input English sentence, we want the VC model to convert as if this English sentence is spoken by these target speakers. So what's challenging about this task is that the VC has never seen these target speakers spoken English before. So uh, the VC model is asked to somehow um, model, for example, the pronunciation or the speaker characteristics of the target speakers so that they can um, correctly speak the English in a native way. All right, so the database was based on the eMind dataset, which contained speech from native English speakers and these bilingual speakers. So first we chose four English speakers as the source speakers, two male and two female. And then we chose another four English speakers as the target speakers for task one. So the criterion here for choosing these eight speakers is that uh, we manually se selected these speakers so that they can be as perceptually discriminative as possible. So that, um, for example, during the listening test, uh, the participants can easily um, or more easily discriminate between the converted audio and the target audio. For task two, we chose two German, Finnish, and Mandarin speakers as the target speakers, one male and one female per language. The criterion here is the fluency. So that um, because the English speech of the bilingual speakers will be used by, uh, will be used to, um, be the reference during the listening test. And we do not want the, for example, the fluency and the, for example, the accent to affect the judgments of the listeners. So we use these fluency charts. These are from the original eMind paper. And then we selected those bilingual speakers who was the most fluent in English. Okay, so this is the timeline. So um, basically we gave the participants about two months to build their systems based on the training data. And after we released the evaluation data, we gave them about one week to convert all the audio. And then we spent about two months to do the listening test. It was pretty large scale. And we uh, released the results and gave the participants about another month to write their papers. All right, uh, next I will ask Xiao Hai to take over the presentation. Okay, uh, thank you, Wenqing. Uh, hello everyone. My name is Dan Xiao Hai from National University of Singapore. Next, I will give a brief summary of the participant and submitted system of voice conversion 2020. Uh, next page, please. Hello, Wenqing. Next page. Yeah, thank you. Uh, in total, there are 33 teams submitted their, uh, their systems, including three baselines and other 30 of round uh, part participants. As mentioned, this year's challenge has two tasks, a monolingual and cross-lingual voice conversion. Uh, there are 31 teams participant task one, 29 teams participant task two. Well, there are 26 teams submitted their systems for both. Uh, next speech, please. In general, our voice conversion system uh, mainly consists of two modules, 
uh, the feature conversion module and vocoder. I will summarize the system according to these two aspects. Uh, this table shows the summary of the feature conversion model used in submitted systems. In total, there are roughly seven types of model belongs to two categories. Uh, two types of model belong to parallel data wise conversion, while there are another five belongs to non parallel data solution. Uh, next page, please. Uh, from the chart plot uh, above, we can see for both tasks, uh, most teams choose non parallel data solution. Uh, for task one, the 26 team choose non parallel data uh, solution. So three teams choose parallel data solution. Uh, for task two, this number will, will be 24 versus two. Uh, we know that there are also two teams that did not submit valid system description. So we mark them as unknown. Detailed information for non parallel data solution are shown in chart plot below. Uh, PPG based voice conversion and Autoencoder based voice conversion are the two choose by most of the teams, followed by TTS, uh, ASR TTS, leverage TTS for voice conversion, and GN based model. Uh, in task one, PPG based voice conversion and autoencoder based voice, voice conversion has been chosen by eight teams, uh, while in task two, there are 11 teams use PPG based voice conversion and eight teams use autoencoder based voice conversion. Uh, next page, please. Uh, next, uh, we will give a summary uh, of the system from a vocoder perspective. In, in total, there are 10 types of vocoder belongs to two, two categories. Uh, three are traditional vocoder, uh, the rest are seven are, non, uh, are neural vocoders. For neural vocoders uh, specifically, three of them are non uh, uh, auto regressive, four are non auto regressive generation. Uh, next, please. Uh, from the chart, up, uh, chart up, plot above, we can see neural vocoders have been chosen by most of the teams. Uh, for task one, 11 teams choose autoregressive neural vocoder. 14 teams choose non-autoregressive neural vocoder. And there are four teams choose traditional vocoder. For task two, uh, there are 11 teams choose uh, autoregressive neural vocoder. 10 teams choose non-autoregressive neural vocoder. Five teams choose trad traditional vocoders. Data the information of neural coders are shown in chart plots below. Uh, WaveNet and parallel WaveGN are the two chosen by most of our teams, followed by WaveRNN, uh, LPCNet, WaveGlow, MelGN, and NSF. In task one, nine teams chosen uh, parallel WaveGN and five teams choose uh, WaveNet. Uh, in task two, seven teams have chosen parallel WaveGN and five teams chosen WaveG uh, WaveNet. So that's all for my part. Thank you. Uh, next, Jolly will take over the presentation. Uh, hi, everyone. I am Yi Zhao from National Institute of Informatics in Japan. I will introduce the subjective evaluations and analysis of these challenge results. Next page. Yeah. Uh, uh, to design the listening test, uh, we choose to use a cross sensing test format and to, eva uh, to evaluate both the natural needs and the speaker similarity. Uh, to evaluate the natural needs, we use a five point scale mode score to evaluate the similarity, we use four point scale score. Uh, in particular, in the second cross lingual task, in addition to reference speech in English, we also use the reference speech in L2 language uh, for the subjects to uh, judge in the speaker similarity across the languages. Uh, we hired both uh, English and Japanese listeners to finish two independent experiments. Uh, next page, please. This is the natural needs results for task one. We can see that first system performed better than last year. This is this top system, team 11. Most of the best performing systems use the PPG entirely or partially. Team 10 and team 13 obtained the highest most values among all systems. Their improvements compared with team 11 was statistically significant. However, team 10 and team 13 most score was still longer than the natural speech, and the differences were statistically significant. Next page. 
this is the similarity results of task one. From finger, we can see that eight systems obtained the highest speaker similarity scores among the VC systems. There were no significant differences among the eight best performing systems and their improvements compared with last year's top system team 11 were statistically significant. Also, the similarity scores of the eight systems were not significantly different from the nature speech of the target speaker. It means the best performing system achieved human level similarity. So the basic interlingual VC task has been solved in the sense of speaker similarity. We think that this is a historical achievement for VC research. Next page. And this finger shows a scatter plot matching nature needs and the percentage of similarity to the target speaker for task one. And let's listen to some samples. In reality, the European Parliament is practicing delay tactics. In reality, the European Parliament is practicing delay tactics. In reality, the European Parliament is practicing delay tactics. In reality, the European Parliament is practicing delay tactics. In reality, the European Parliament is practicing delay tactics. In reality, the European Parliament is practicing delay tactics. In reality, the European Parliament is practicing delay tactics. This is the nature needs plot for a second task. We can see that most of the best performing system use the PPG like team 10, 13, and 25. Uh, we can also see that VC systems using a combination of ASR and TT system like team 27, 33, and 22 obtained lunar scores. Moreover, it is interesting to observe that team 10 achieved the highest scores and was not significantly different from the nature speech of the target speaker. However, uh, it suffered a drop in nature needs of 0 0.75 points in Moscow compared with the intralingual task. Uh, in fact, most teams who joined both tasks obtained a lunar score uh, evaluation in task two. Uh, this clearly indicates an increase in the complexity of the cross-lingual task. Next. This is a nature needs result for the task two. All of the VC system has much lunar similarity scores than for nature speech, and the differences are statistically significant, which means the cross lingual VC has room for improvement. Next page. Uh, this finger shows a scatter plot matching nature needs and the percentage of similarity to the target speaker of task two. Uh, we can see that there was an obvious gap between nature speech and VC systems. Uh, please play the samples. In reality, the European Parliament is practicing delay tactics. In reality, the European Parliament is practicing delay tactics. In reality, the European Parliament is practicing delay tactics. In reality, the European Parliament is practicing delay tactics. In reality, the European Parliament is practicing delay tactics. In reality, the European Parliament is practicing delay tactics. Uh, we also did further analysis using our listening test data. Here, we just simply introduced the conclusions. Firstly, we compared English and Japanese listeners' evaluation results. We found that although there were a few inconsistencies among the two listener groups, it seems it is acceptable to use non-native listeners to access the performance of cross lingual VC system to some extent. Secondly, uh, the choice of the language of the reference audio is very important. Listener generally give lunar speaker similarity scores in the case of the L2 language reference. Thirdly, uh, we found that the, most of the VC system had the highest, most, and similarity scores for German target speakers and lowest similarity scores for Mandarin speakers. This may be partly due to the linguistic distances to English, but this requires further investigation. Next page. And now let's go to the conclusion. Next page. Uh, uh, 
uh, this VCC challenge, we can see that a great progress has been uh, achieved in techniques. Uh, in the cross lingo version, the best system could achieve the every nature needs more score at, as high as 4.27. Uh, this uh, score is only 4.1 in last VCC challenge. Also, over 95% acquired speech samples were to be the same as the target speakers, but this number is only 80% in last VCC challenge. In the cross-lingual task, we can see that the best system could achieve the nature needs most score as high as 4.27. This is the same as the interlingual coercion, and this is surprising. Uh, but the similarity results, only 75% uh, 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 converted speech samples were to be the same as the target speakers. Next page. Uh, from these results of the cross sourcing test, we can see that uh, basic methods have been uh, progressed a lot. In particular, the speaker similarity scores of several systems turned out to be as high as target speakers in the intralingual semi parallel VC task. Uh, we think that this is a historical achievement for VC research. However, we confirmed that none of them have achieved human level nature and needs. Uh, this is pity. The cross-lingual voice uh, coercion task is a more difficult task, and the overall naturalness and the similarity scores were lower than all the intralingual coercion tasks. This voice coercion challenge has shown that both intralingual and cross-lingual VC tasks have not been completely solved. We, be we believe that uh, continuous efforts and investments in VC knowledge are deserved. Thank you. This is the end of our presentation. Hello, everyone. I'm Rohan from NUS, Singapore. So we would like to talk about our work, predictions of subjective rating and spoofing assessments of voice conversion challenge 2020 submissions. Next slide. So in this work, we investigate two aspects. First one is, can the objective assessment metrics predict human judgments on naturalness and speaker similarity? And the second aspect is, which are the voice conversion technologies that have the highest trade for spoofing attacks against automatic speaker verification and countermeasures? Next slide. So let us view why we need the objective assessment. Firstly, they are complementary to the listening test. Apart from that, they are less time consuming and they are cost effective than the large crowdsourcing listening test. For instance, for VCC, in 2020, we had to spend about 1 million Japanese yen for the crowdsourcing test. Next slide. Next slide. Yeah. Uh, so coming to ASV, it has been found that they are quite vulnerable to various kinds of spoofing attacks. And voice conversion technology is one such way to attack ASV. Next slide. In this regard, the research on Spoofing countermeasures have gained attention across the last couple of years. Even some of the industries have deployed spoofing countermeasures along with their voice, con uh, voice biometrics to enhance the security against such attacks. Apart from that, the ASB spoof challenge series also tries to promote research on countermeasures, especially on the attacks. Those are derived by voice conversion, text-to-speech, or replay attacks. Next. Coming to our work, we use four different kinds of objective evaluation techniques. First one is the ASV, which we use to judge the speaker similarity. We use the X-factor based embedding and PLDA scoring is used. And apart from that, we also use the cosine distance based metric as well. The next objective technique is the spoofing countermeasures, which is used to assess the real versus fake assessment. We use a light CNN based state of the art system that considers LFCC as input, which is trained on ASB spoof 2019 logical access corpus. The third tool that we use is the automatic mean opinion score, which is MOSNET that is used to judge the quality. It is a CNN LSTM based model that is trained using magnitude spectrum following the original work. And we use two different kinds of model in this work. One is using the previous 
first conversion challenge data, which is PCC 2018, and another is the latest ASB spoof series challenge data, ASB spoof 2019. Lastly, we use ASR for assessing the intelligibility of the converted speech. This is a system developed by iFlyTech that is based on sequence to sequence with attention. Uh, it uses 10,000 hours of recording for acoustic model and GB level text for language modeling. Next, we will uh, observe how this objective evaluation matrix can be used for judging the uh, rankings of each team. Yeah. So next, I pass over to Tommy for next part. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So let's look at the ASB system. So here we use the quality expect the receipt to basically score the uh, uh, different uh, voice conversion entries. So uh, generally, uh, we treat here the ASP as a black box, which uh, basically receives two uh, speech inputs, uh, enrollment or training utterance and test utterance. And basically, this black box gives us a speaker similarity scores. So uh, in uh, this um, VCC 20, uh, we compute three kinds of uh, scores. Um, uh, first one of them is going to be um, uh, different natural speakers compared to each other, leading to score distribution like this. The other one is the same speaker uh, natural distribution uh, shown in green. And the third one, which then involves comparing the uh, voice conversion samples um, uh, with the target speakers is shown here. And basically uh, we use the overlap of these uh, distributions two and three as a measure of the uh, voice conversion success. So if these two uh, distributions are completely overlapped, uh, it means this has um, equal error rate of 50%. And it means that the ASP system is completely uh, confused to be believe that this is um, a target speaker recording. So let's look at the results. So here, uh, let's start with the uh, natural data. So this uh, ASP system gives an error rate of 0.50% uh, without any voice conversion. So when we uh, then add the voice conversion, uh, you can see that the equal error rate of the top systems gets close to the 50%. And the false acceptance rate uh, of most systems is close to the 100%. So the ASP system gets um, rather confused. We also additionally <clears throat> looked one more analysis, which is basically how um, far away the voice conversion manages to move from the original source speaker. And this is the one shown in gray. And we see here that the ASP system in this case is also confused to um, declare most of the time that these are different speakers. So in this sense, uh, most of the uh, voice conversion entries here are successfully de-identifying the, um, the original source speaker in terms of ASP. So we can look at the task two. Actually, the findings are uh, very similar here, a little bit um, lower false acceptance rates, uh, but generally speaking, similar trends. So let's look at the next result. So uh, this is uh, the other ASP system where we don't compute the equal error rate, but this is simply a very cosine similarity between the voice conversion and the target uh, recording. And we see here that uh, most of the time we, we get similarity score close to the maximum, which is one. So, and the findings are generally similar uh, with the other uh, speaker recognition experiment. Next one. So when we look at this spoofing countermeasure, uh, so um, here we also see that um, uh, the uh, equal error rates of the um, spoofing countermeasure are in sometimes uh, close to 50% and generally very high. So this means that the, uh, the spoofing uh, countermeasure uh, cannot differentiate the, um, the human speeds from the voice converted uh, speeds in this case. So for instance, in the task one, uh, uh, around half of the teams have equal error rate uh, more than 30. And in the second task, uh, there are only three teams which have an equal error rate less than 10%. So now I will sp uh, switch to Wenchin. All right, so, um, so next, I will talk about the uh, MOSNET predictions. So comparing to the true range of the most scores, which is from one to five, we can see that the MOSNET predictions range from 2.5 to 4.5 which is a lot smaller than the true range. And then this is the same for task one and two. As for automatic speech recognition, we can see that around half of the teams have or their rate less than 20%, which means that most teams can um, maintain the linguistic consistency when they do conversion. All right, so finally, let's hear some audio samples so that we can know that what kind of aspect that each metric is evaluating. 
So first we will play the ASV. So we're playing a um, sample that is pretty good, which it means that uh, it can easily fool the ASV system to the source. Changes aroused orthodox opposition and sometimes government Target. intervention. These changes aroused orthodox opposition and sometimes government intervention. Convert the sample. These changes roused orthodox opposition and sometimes government intervention. Next, the countermeasure. So um, this is also a pretty good sample, meaning that it has um, less artifacts compared to other uh, samples. So I'll play the converted samples here only. This is a trade and shipping point for an array of large merchandise farms. Okay, the next, the mouse net prediction. So um, uh, counter to the uh, previous two samples, here we play a sample that has low mouse net prediction score. Almost all students who are accepted into medical schools obtain a medical degree. Finally, we come to the ESR. So this one is also having a low intelligibility of where we rate about 91%. So we want to emphasize that, um, for example, if we if one sample is performing pretty good in one metric, does not mean that it will perform good in another metric. And also performing good, for example, in all metrics, does not know does that mean that it will be perceptually good um, to human. Okay, so next, we uh, after we see the individual results of each metric, we want to know how it correlates to the subjective results. So we want to ask either uh, whether these metrics can predict human judgments. So first, we draw these scatter plots. So uh, if you look at the appendix of the paper, you can see a complete series of these plots. So here we list two samples. This is the ASVR, ASV uh, equal error rate plots for task one quality and task one similarity. So by looking at these plots, you might have a sense that maybe this one has lower correlation and this one has a higher correlation. But we want to um, look at the real numbers, look at the precise numbers so we can compare like the correlation between different um, figures. So we calculated these Pearson correlation coefficients between the metrics and the subjective scores. Okay, so here um, we can roughly uh, separate the metrics into two categories. These ASV scores, cosine, sim, cosine distance, can be seen as, for example, the speaker-related uh, metrics. And the MOSNET scores and the ASR word error rate can be seen as those related to quality. So first, we will see, we will see which metrics have moderate coefficients for quality. So um, as, uh, what we expect here is that, um, for example, the MOSNET predictions in ASR scores should be pretty related to the quality. And this is what we expected here. But we can also see that, for example, um, ASV scores is pretty related to the subjective scores for task one. And for task two, the consent distance is pretty uh, related to the quality. So we might ask, why does this happen? So um, the reason we suggest is that maybe the human judgments on quality and similarity are not independent. So that when you listen to, when we are asked to judge the quality, you're somehow kind of like um, uh, influenced by the similarity of that converted speech. And by looking at the similarity, we can also um, observe a pretty similar trend so that uh, of course the ESV scores and the cosine distance are pretty um, related to the similarity, but here the MOSNET scores are correlated to the similarity for task one also. So this again proves that um, the judgments on quality and similarity are not independent. So finally, uh, after seeing these individual correlations, we want to know that if we can further uh, correct correctly, um, or we can say more correctly, predict the subjective scores by combining multiple metrics. So what we did here was that we simply combined um, multiple metrics and used a multiple linear regression to use these input variables to regress to the uh, subjective scores. And the observation here is that um, for MOS, which means the quality scores, we can see that we have two um, metrics that can be significantly explainable. For example, in task one MOS, we have ASR and ASV. For task two, we have MOSNET and ASR. And for uh, similarity, we can see that only the ASV equal array score is um, significantly explainable. So what we want to say here is that uh, we think that the ASV ER itself is sufficiently explainable for the similarity score because itself has pretty high correlation. Well, overall, we would say that 
this kind of analysis is pretty consistent with the previous analysis, saying that, for example, um, the ASR and the MOSNET is responsible for quality, and ASB is responsible for similarity. And we can also see that if we compare these adjusted R squared scores with the uh, um, correlations in the individual section, we can see that the prediction accuracy of quality can be improved by um, combining multiple metrics. However, the test two quality is a little bit lower in terms of adjusted R squared score. And this indicates that cross-lingual voice conversion is more, is kind of like more difficult to be predicted by using these metrics. So we will need um, more improvement in these metrics to further correctly predict these metrics. All right, so I'll let Tommy to take over the last part of our presentation. Okay, so as our, our last analysis, uh, we look at a so-called uh, tandem performance assessment of the spoofing countermeasure and the ASV. So let's uh, look at how this looks like. So basically, in this case, um, we are thinking that the spoofing countermeasure is something like a gate, which uh, tries to um, stop the uh, voice conversion attacks uh, from uh, being sent to the ASV system. And uh, there, there is a recent metric, uh, you can find the reference below, uh, which can be kind of used to um, evaluate the combination of these two systems. So generally speaking, uh, there are like uh, four different errors that can have happen in this kind of combined uh, system. And uh, two of them are related to the user inconvenience and two are related to the security breach, uh, let's say this way. And there are uh, parameters, but uh, basically you put, um, these are these parameters and you get one number that tells how well the combination of the two systems works. So uh, we computed this metric uh, for um, the different voice conversion systems. And uh, here are the, uh, from each task, the top uh, systems uh, identify the highest tandem DCF. So we basically identified two, uh, two different patterns. So one pattern happens when the uh, automatic speaker verification system is basically not fooled at all by the voice conversion. So uh, the ASP system rejects the con voice conversion, but combined with, uh, with uh, let's say, low performing uh, spoofing countermeasure in, uh, for, for that perspective. So this means that uh, because the, the attack wouldn't have, uh, have any impact on the ASP, so we shouldn't be uh, trying to um, reject it because the, then the spoofing countermeasure will uh, lead to uh, genuine user re uh, rejections. So this is uh, what we see in this orange, and this is uh, associ associated with the, uh, the, the classic uh, vocoder type of systems, mostly. And the other type of pattern that we see when uh, both of these systems basically have high error rates. And uh, so this, is, uh, uh, this takes place um, with uh, a more modern uh, neural vocoder type of systems. So, uh, so both of these uh, are kind of um, important to consider in this kind of evaluation. So maybe we can move then to conclusion. So uh, of course there are many, many results, but uh, what we could um, maybe conclusively say here is that from these uh, different techniques, uh, the automatic speaker verification and ASR, which are trained on our natural data, and um, let's say represent somehow like matured technology. So this are uh, kind of like a lead to a stable uh, kind of metrics and, and a good correlations with the subjective results. Then uh, with the other two techniques like uh, MOSNET and spoofing countermeasures, so these are uh, somewhat more experimental, that they have a very potential, and actually all of these four are contributing to the predictions as we saw. But we also know, for instance, for the spoofing countermeasures that uh, we have um, issues when generalizing these systems uh, from database to another. So it needs more work, basic work maybe uh, on these uh, systems. As far as the spoofing thread is considered, so about the traditional um, approaches and the uh, neural vocoders here uh, keep uh, remaining important. And one limitation of this work uh, that we should address in future work is that, okay, we basically looked everything at the system level, uh, taking all the samples uh, in a kind of aggregated statistics, uh, but we didn't show a kind of like sentence level predictions as for the listening test. So that's all we probably want to say. So thank you very much for your attention. Hello, everyone. This is Jing Xuan Zhang. I'm very glad to share our work on the Voice Conversion Challenge 2020, the monolingual task. The recognition synthesis based voice conversion is one of the popular methods for solving non-parallel voice conversion. <clears throat> it consists of recognition module for extracting some intermediate representations. Then 
the converted speech is senses from a senses model. There's mainly two limitations of this kind of method. First, the intermediate representations, such as PPGs, may still contain some speaker-related information, which may harm the similarity of converted speech. Second, the PPG-based feature are frame-based. Therefore, it's difficult to adjust the duration flexibly. The ASR TTS technique have developed very rapidly in the recent years. Therefore, it's natural to build an ASR TTS-based voice conference system by cascading the ASR and TTS module. <clears throat> in this case, the characters is actually used as intermediate representations. There are two benefits of this kind of method. First, the characters only contain the linguistic content. Second, once the characters are obtained, it's easy to adjust the duration flexibly by using a sequence-to-sequence -sequence TTS system. We first compare the iFly tag and the ESP Knight based ASA model. And we select the iFly tag based one because it achieved better performance. For the TTS module, we selected the Transformer TTS. First, the Transformer TTS is highly parallel during training. It leads to better training efficiency. Second, the self-attention structure makes the Transformer TTS easily for capture long-term dependency. Besides the speaker and the linguistic information, we also introduce a prosody. We also assume the speech contain prosody aspect, which need to be modeled. Therefore, we introduce a prosody encoder to uh, extract some prosody code. During the conversion, the prosody code is used to condition transformer TDS to transfer the prosody from the source speaker. A speaker adversal learning is used to make sure the prosody code is speaker independent. This is a configuration of our experiment. We compare our method with the PPG based baseline, which we denote it as VCC2080+. It used the PPG-like features as intermediate representation and used as cross-lingual task in our uh, voice govern challenge 2020. From this, from this result, we can see that the proposed method achieved better similarity and close naturalist, slightly better naturalist compared to the PPG baseline. Then we compare our method with and without prosody transfer. For the target speaker TF2, with prosody transfer achieves slightly better result. However, the averagely, the with and without prosody transfer method achieve close performance, and this difference is insignificant. At last, our method achieved the the best naturalist and the best similarity in the voice conversion challenge 2020. Compared to the natural target, we achieved very close similarity score. And for the more score, there's still some distance between our team and natural target. In conclusion, we present the ASR TTS method for a voice conversion challenge 2020 and uh, our team achieved the best naturalist and similarity. A prosody transfer technique is presented, which we extract the prosody code used to condition the TTS module. It achieved slightly better result on the TF2 target speaker. However, the overall difference is insignificant. Uh, we suppose uh, this reason is because the voice conversion challenge 2020 is 
not very expressive. Therefore, the Prosley transfer technique makes no significant difference. Thank you. This is ending of this representation. Hello everyone, my name is Li Zhuan Liu. I come from IFLA Tech Research. It's my honor to share our paper, Non-Parallel Voice Conversion with Autoregressive Conversion Model and Duration Adjustment. This is the outline of this presentation. In Voice Conversion Challenge 2018, the intern system which adopted a PPG-based conversion model with neural vocoder was proposed for non-parallel VC. It achieves state-of-the-art performance. However, when comparing the results of intent with the target speech, a performance gap still exists. This may be due to several modeling insufficiencies in the system, such as the limited modeling capability of LCMI-based conversion model, the quantization noise in the adopted neural vocoder, as well as that the speech rate difference is not considered in this system. So, in order to improve the conversion performance, this paper proposes three improvement approaches. Autoregressive model has shown strong modeling ability in capturing dependence in sequential data and has been widely used in TDS. So, we propose to substitute the autoregressive model for RCMN-based conversion model and predict the mirror spectrum instead. We use a similar network structure as that in Tectron 2. To mitigate the speech rate difference, we propose a duration adjustment strategy. Furthermore, we propose to use a high fidelity valve net introduced in the clarinet as our neural vocoder, which is what uses a single variance bounded Gaussian distribution to model 24 kHz 16 bit waveform. Both conversion model and neural vocoder model follow a two stage training strategy the pre training and the fine tuning. During the pre-training strategy, multi-speak models are trained with speaker embedding, and during fine-tuning stage, speaker-dependent model is adjusted using training data of each target speaker with the initialization of the pre-trained model. We propose a duration adjustment strategy to mitigate the speech rate difference. During conversion process, the, con the obtained feature sequences extracted from the ASR model are linearly interpolarated using estimated interpolarization coefficients before fitting into the conversion model. The interpolarization coefficient for each conversion pair is estimated separately and is obtained in two steps. In the first step, a rough coefficient is estimated by calculating the ratio of average fermi duration between source and target speakers. Then the rough coefficient is precisely adjusted until no obvious speech rate difference is perceived between converted speech and the target speech. To evaluate the performance of our proposed method, we use the dataset of the intralingual task in VCC 2020. We also evaluate the performance of applying our proposed method to cross-lingual VC directly. We use the dataset of the cross-lingual task in VCC 2020. In this experiment, 64 sentences are randomly chosen for training and the remaining six sentences uh, for validation. For the non-parallel intralingual VC, three systems are built and compared. The baseline is the Enten system in VCC 2018. We also construct uh, two systems using our proposed method with and without the duration adjustment. We conduct a subjective listening test. Um, first of all, we compare our proposed method without using duration adjustment with the baseline system. From Table 1, we can see that both naturalist and speak similarity performance can obtain 0.16 and 0.1 MOS improvements by using autoregressive conversion model and high fidelity neural vocoder. Um, then we evaluate the, the effectiveness of using duration adjustment. Um, we can see we can see that from the results in table two, that the naturalist and the speaker similarity can be further improved with the use of duration adjustment strategy. For the cross-lingual VC, we present the official listening test results in VCC 2020. 
The left figure shows the, the subjective listening test results of speech quality. The right figure shows the results of the speaker similarity. Our system is T10. We can see that our system obtains the best performance in speech quality and comparable performance to the best system in speaker similarity. In this paper, an improved system was proposed for non-parallel VC on the basis of the top system in VCC 2018. In our proposed method, an autoregressive best conversion model was used to improve the conversion model capability. A high fidelity WebNet based neural vocoder was adopted to model 24 kHz 16 bit waveform to improve the conversion speech quality. A duration adjustment strategy was proposed to alleviate the obvious speech rate difference between source and target speakers. Experimental results validated the effectiveness of our proposed method in both converted speech naturalness and speaker similarity. Besides, by applying it directly to the cross-lingual VC in VCC 2020, it achieved the standard of the other performance. That's all. Thank you. Hello, everyone. We are from Samsung Research China, Beijing. We would like to present our work submission from SRCB for Voice Conversion Challenge 2020. Here is our outline. First, we will talk about the voice conversion problem. Then, we will talk about our proposed method and experiment details. Last, we will analyze our results in this year's challenge and make a conclusion. Voice conversion modifies a source speaker's speech so that the result sounds like a target speaker's. Our work is to build a conversion function. This year's voice conversion challenge has two difficulties to overcome. Firstly, the training data provided is non-parallel. We cannot learn the conversion function in strongly supervised manner like using parallel data do. And also, non-parallel training cannot guarantee alignment of acoustic units among the training groups, which is very helpful to acoustic modeling at finer granularity. Secondly, voice conversion becomes particularly difficult when source and target speakers speak different languages. The phonetic foundation linking the speaker's acoustic characteristic is weaker. And of course, different language means non-parallel too. We need to find a solution considering both of these two challenges and meanwhile improve the output speech's naturalness and sound quality. Related work uses automatic speech recognition, which is called ASR module, to infer phonetic correspondence between non-parallel materials. We consider a TTS-like approach that first computes phonetic posteriorgram, we call the PPG, from source utterance. The PPG is seen as a soft decoding of the utterance into time-stamped phonetic units. It is then fed as text to synthesize speech in the voice of the targeted speaker. Cross-lingual voice conversion can also be implemented by mapping PPG to and from acoustic features of different speakers. So we chose this direction to design our solution. Now, we would like to explain how they work. For PPG extracting, we used the CVT Mandarin ASR model and Libre Speech English ASR model for extracting bilingual PPGs. Since Mandarin PPGs contains more tongue information, it is reasonable to augment the English PPG with the Mandarin PPG to effectively express phonetic content. In particular, we consider concatenating English and Mandarin PPGs computed from the source utterance regardless of its true language ID, as shown in the picture. Then the speech synthesizer converts this bilingual PPG to male spectrogram. 
The X vector is a discriminatively pre-trained speaker embedding widely used in speaker recognition. Well, we train the X vector extractor model by using both Mandarin and English data, but different from the usual ones, we use 64 dimension X vector instead of 512 dimension because it became easier to converge while training the model. Then we will talk about the core synthesizer. Besides the X vector, what we call the speaker embedding, the decoder is also conditioned on residue encoding. The residue encoder predicts a variational post area from source utterance, which includes unexplained information like noise and environment. We observe that this allows training synthesizer with noisy data and then generating clean speech. In this work, we add 14 types of noise to VCC data at different SNR. This gives 15-fold augmentation of the low-resource VCC training data and helps improve the naturalness and sound quality allowed. Our internal data is much more than the data VCC provided. Without this, without this augmentation of VCC data, the synthesizer's training would lose its balance. We also use the do domain adversary training to encourage the output of text decoder to encode PPG in a speaker-independent manner by introducing a speaker classifier based on the text decoding and a gradient reversal lawyer. It has shown good performance in TTS training, so it is reasonable that we apply this adversary training to voice conversions core synthesizers training. They have similar structure. Finally, we will talk about our vocoder. We chose WaveNet as our vocoder for its high naturalness. We've trained a general model first and then fine tune it for each targeted speaker to improve its sound quality. And then we add a post processing, post -processing module called Vocoast Noise Suppression. In this module, we use pink reference to construct a noise model and calculate SNR of each frame, and then we use winner, winner filtering. We add void detection module and use different noise suppression intensities for void and non-void frames, respectively. This can improve sound quality a lot. And then we will talk about experiment details. For PPG, we use CALDI pre-trained ASR model, including CVTE Mandarin model and Libre Speech English model. For X vector extractor, we use CALDI toolkit to train the model, and we use internal dataset more than 200 hours and 300 Mandarin and American English speakers. To train a core synthesizer, we use two datasets. One is VCC 2020 dataset, including eight English speakers, two Finnish speakers, two German speakers, and two Mandarin speakers. Each speaker has 70 utterances, 65 for training and five for testing. Another dataset is our internal dataset, including 14,000 utterances of six American English speakers, including three females and three males. We use sample rate, sample rate uh, 24,000, and our, we use mirror spectro spectrogram, 80 dimensions. We train our WaveNet vocoder using our internal data, more than th 30 30,000 utterances of one female American speaker. And then we fine tune for each targeted speaker. Well, in VCC 2020 official report, there are subjective tests and objective tests. We mainly focus on subjective results. The subjective test includes two items, naturalness and similarities. We got most 4.17 in intralingual voice conversion task, which is task 1, 
and 4.13 in cross-language conversion task, which is task 2, both rank 2 among all the team's party. This score means our work on generating human-like speech has a good performance. Then in similarity test, we got most 3.68 in intralingual task and 2.94 in cross-lingual task, both rank 4, which rank is slightly lower than the naturalness performance. Why? Because we found that the vocoder wavenet indeed has good naturalness when converting male spectrogram into waveform speech. However, we did not train the target speaker's vocoder directly, for we do not have enough clean speech of target speaker. So instead, we first train the general network, use one American English female speaker, and then fine tune it for each target speaker. So, in, uh, so the general model guarantees the naturalness, but the fine-tuned model cannot guarantee the similarity of targeted speaker. Uh, considering the good performance of speech naturalness of the vocoder, the loss of speaker similarity was acceptable. Finally, we will make a conclusion. First, we design a PPG and TTS solution for the non-parallel and cross-lingual challenge. Then, improve sound quality and naturalness by improving the performance of synthesizer. First, we use residue encoder and data augmentation for low resource speaker. And then we use domain adversarial training for a speaker independent text decoder. And then to improve the performance of our vocoder, we use wall focused noise suppression post processing. Thank you. Hello everyone. I'm Lian Zheng from the Institution of Automation, Chinese Academy of Science. It's a really great pleasure indeed for me to be able to attend this meeting. Today, I would like to present my paper, The Casilla Voice Conversion System for the Voice Conversion Challenge 2020. My presentation contains all four parts, including the motivation, the proposed method, the experimental results, and the conclusions. Firstly, I will introduce the motivation of this paper. Voice conversion aims to modify the source speaker's voice to sound like that of the target speaker while keeping the linguistic content unchanged. The conventional voice conversion approach usually needs parallel chain data, which contains pairs of same transcript utterance spoken by different speakers. Parallel voice conversion first aligns acoustic units between source and target speech by dynamic time wrapping. Then, conversion model is learned to map speech from source to target speaker. While parallel chain data is unavailable, there are some methods for non parallel voice conversion. Variational autoencoders has been successfully proposed for non parallel voice conversion. However, Variational autoencoder suffers from oversmoothing. To address this problem, general adversarial neural network and its variants use a discriminator that amplifies these artifacts in the loss function. However, these methods are hard to train, and the discriminator's discernment may not correspond well to human auditory perception. Recently, there is another track of research that applies the PBGS for non-parallel voice conversion. PBGS are the frame-level linguistic information represents obtained from the speaker-independent automatic speech recognition system. The PBGS-based voice conversion framework mainly have two key components, the conversion model and the vocoder. The conversion model converts PBGS extracted from the source speech into acoustic features of the target speaker. Then the vocoder uses this converted speech to synthesize the speech waveform of the target speaker. Since VCC 2020 only provides a few parallel chain data in this task, while the parallel chain data is unavailable in the second task. To deal with this problem, we utilize the PBGS-based voice conversion framework 
in our system. Our system uses a CBHG conversion model and the LPC network coder for speech generation. The CBHG conversion model has a bank of one-dimensional convolutional filters, highway networks, and a bidirectional gate Ricardo units. Previous works have verified that this structure can effectively capture content information in feature sequences. The LPC network coder combines the linear prediction with recurrent neural networks. Previous works have verified that this vocoder can better control the spectral shape. Uh, to better control the procedure of converted speech, we utilize acoustic features of the source speech as additional features, including the pitch, voice on voice flag, and BAP. In the training stage, we first extract acoustic features, pitch, band, BAP, voice and on voice flag and PVGS from the target speech. Then we congregate these features. Finally, a CVAG conversion model is learned to convert these features into the acoustic features. In the conversion stage, we first extract pitch, BAP, voice on voice flag and PVGS from the source speech. A linear conversion is applied to convert pitch from the source speaker to the target speaker. These representations are fed into the conversion model, aiming to predict the converted acoustic features. Finally, we feed these converted acoustic features to the speaker-dependent LPC network coder for speech generation. For coder influence the quality of the converted speech. In this paper, we choose the LPC network coder for speech generation. In this work, we use the code published by the Mozilla team with some modifications. Since Voice Conversion Challenge 2020 focused on the 24 kilohertz conversion strategies, we modified the original 16 kilohertz LPC net to 24 kilohertz LPC net. To better control high frequency features, we increase feature dimension of BFCC features to 30 dimensions. To extract more accurate pitch trajectory, we use the wrapper toolkit in the word vocoder for the pitch estimation. Totally, we extract 32 dimensional features. Since the training data is limited in the voice conversion challenge 2020, we apply speaker adaptive approach for CBAG conversion model and LPC net vocoder. As for the CBAG conversion model, we first train a multi-speaker average model. The PBGS argumented with one hot speaker embedding vector are used as the inputs. Then we adapt the pre-trained average model to the target speaker. As for the LPC net vocoder, we first train an initialization model with a multi-speaker dataset without additional speaker embedding. Then we adopt the initialization model to the target speaker with limited data. What's more, we increase training samples by means of speech perturbation. It is a technique of changing speech speed while keeping the tone unchanged. We randomly choose speed factor from 0.6 to 1.2. In the VCC 2020, the quality of the speech samples and their speech and their similarity to the target speaker are evaluated using the official subjective evaluation. The organizer accrued 206 Japanese listeners and 68 English listeners to evaluate the converted speech. Subjective test results on the task one as shown in this figure. Our CASIA voice conversion system is denoted as T29. This figure shows that our system achieves a MOS of 3.99 for speech quality in this task, compared with 3.79 for the baseline and 4.07 for the top, top system. And this figure also shows that our system achieves a similarity score of 64% in task one, compared with 79% for the baseline system and 
89% for the top system. Subjective test results on the task two are shown in this figure. It shows that our system achieves a MOS of 3.99 for speech quality in task two, compared with 3.80 for the baseline and 4.18 and 4 for top system. And uh, the, the right figure shows that our system achieved a similarity score of 69% in, in the task two, compared with 59% for the baseline system and 71% for top system. Overall, the results of the voice conversion challenge 2020 rank our system in the, record, in the second place. There are some examples. These changes aroused orthodox opposition and sometimes government intervention. And this is the target speaker. Moroccan agriculture enjoys special treatment when exporting to Europe. And this is our proposed message. These changes aroused orthodox opposition and sometimes government intervention. And I will show some example of the task too. These changes aroused orthodox opposition and sometimes government intervention. Die verschiedenen Berichte spiegeln diesen Mainstream wider. These changes are as orthodox opposition and sometimes government intervention. Uh, finally, we conclude our the whole paper. In this paper, we present our CASIA voice conversion system developed for the voice conversion challenge 2020. Our system adopts the CBH structure to convert the source speech, source speech PBGS in toxic speech acoustic features. Then the LPC network coder is utilized for speech generation. To better control the prosody of commercial speech, the an, other, other acoustic features, including the pitch, the voice on voice flag, and the BAP of the source speech are utilized as additional inputs. To deal with the impact of limited training samples, speaker adaptive strategies are also applied. The results of voice conversion challenge 2020 rank our system in the second place with a most of 3.99 for speech quality and, a 60 and 84 percent accuracy for speaker similarity. And that's all, and thanks for your attention. Hi everyone, so my name is Ho Tung Vo, and I'm from Akagi Laboratory of Japan Advanced Institute of Science and Technology. So it's a pleasure for me today to introduce my study on normally voice conversions based on the hierarchical latent embedding vector quantized rational autoencoder. So first I want to make some brief introductions. Voice conversions is a method to change the voice characteristics, for example, age or gender, while preserving the linguistic content. The cross-lingual voice conversions is the special case where the target speaker does not speak the soft speaker language. Vector quantized rational autoencoder is a model can, that can be used for cross-lingual voice conversions and it can disentangle the linguistic content and the speaker information. In this model, the discrete latent CQ here will represent the linguistic information, while the speaker information will be captured in the speaker embedding. However, in the conventional VQV model, the latent, discrete latent variable only capture the information at the fixed temporal scale. Therefore, it may not efficient to capture the hierarchical semantic structure of the speech, for example, phonemes, syllables, or words. So, inspired by the VQV2 study, we propose to use the hierarchical latent structure to capture the semantic structure at different temporal scale. So, here is the overview of our model. Our model contains uh, multiple stages that operate at multiple time scale. So each encoder will now sample the input by the factor of two. On the other side, the decoder will upsample the input by a factor of two. Our one of the features of our model is the speaker embedding, which is learnable, therefore it can be updated during the training process. To adapt the model to the cross-lingual setting, so first, we randomly initialize new target speaker embedding and the latent codebooks. Next, we fine-tune in the target speaker embedding and the latent codebook on the target data. And finally, we, the voice conversions is performed using the new target embedding and the model trained on English data. 
So here is the illustrations of the speaker embedding during the training process. And we conduct experiment to compare the performance of three model. The baseline model is the VQV model without the hierarchical structure and our proposed model with two stage and three stage of hierarchical structure. For training data, we use the voice conversion challenge training data and the VCTK data set. We use the AT dimensional mail cache stream for the, the input features and we use parallel wave gang to reconstruct the waveform. We measure the root mean square error between the modulation spectrum of the target and the converted speech. The RMS is average across all modulation frequencies, mail channels, and utterances. As we can see in the table, the proposed model with three stages achieved the lowest RMSC. Next, we conduct a listening test to compare the performance. As we can see, the proposed model with three stages achieved the highest preference score in both natural tests and the speaker similarity test. Therefore, we use the converted utterance from the three stage model to submit to the voice conversion challenge. Our team is T20. The official results show that the model achieved the highest natural score among all auto encoder based models in both task 1 and task 2. For speaker similarity, our model achieved the comparable performance with auto encoder based method. However, there is a decline in the task 2. And we have uh, four conclusions. We have proposed a hierarchical latent structure to improve the performance of VQV based cross legal voice conversions. And the proposed method can outperform the, the vanilla VQV model and achieve the best natural score among all auto encoder based methods. So here is some audio samples from our model. In reality, the European Parliament is practicing delay tactics. Summertime has, in practice, become normal time. In reality, the European Parliament is practicing delay tactics. In reality, the European Parliament is practicing delay tactics. In reality, the European Parliament is practicing delay tactics. So that's all for my presentations. Thank you. Hi everyone, and thanks for attending this presentation. I am Oriol, and I will talk about FASVC, a work that I did with Milos, principal engineer at Logitech. The motivation of this work was to build a simple system for voice conversion that performs fast inference so as to allow inertial applications. However, despite these two first requirements, we didn't want to give up quality. Our work takes O2PC as a baseline, because this model satisfies two of the three constraints that we had. First of all, it's a simple model based on conditional autoencoders, and second of all, it achieves high quality results. Now, let's talk about FASVC. Our model achieves voice conversion with a three-stage procedure, similarly to AutoVC. Since these two models have a lot of similarities, I will focus on the main differences that we have with respect to AutoVC in each of these stages. Let's first focus on the male spectrum transform. In line with the simplicity requirement, we use raw data as input. This means that we don't apply any kind of preprocessing, and we use all frequencies differently from AutoVC. But the main difference is that we implement the MLS spectrum transform with CNNs. This means that the transform can be initialized to the exact value, but can it also be learned, thus allowing end-to-end -end training. The autoencoder module is the core of voice conversion. FASVC uses one autoencoded speaker identities instead of speaker embeddings. This means that we don't allow zero-shot voice conversion, but this was not a desirable feature. Also, FASVC has different hyperparameters in the information bottleneck than AutoVC. AutoVC applies two kinds of information bottleneck. First of all, it applies a temporal downsampling and also a dimensionality reduction. FASVC applies twice as many temporal downsampling and has half the dimensionality that AutoVC has. This is to ensure that the latents are speaker independent. Last of all, let's focus on the male spectrum inverter. FASVC uses Melgan, which in contrast to autoregressive models such as WaveNet, which is the design choice of AutoVC, allows for very fast male spectral inversions. Let's now listen to some samples of the cross-lingual task. 
we'll hear the samples obtained with the two baselines of the voice conversion challenge, O2VC and our proposal FASVC. The audiovisual sector is very important. Die verschiedenen Berichte spiegeln diesen Mainstream wider. The audiovisual sector is very important. Vision. The audiovisual sector is very important. The audiovisual sector is very important. The audiovisual sector is very important. Let's now jump to the objective evaluation of the proposed method. Voice conversion is an ill post problem. For this reason, it is difficult to assess the results of a voice conversion model with objective measures. We use PESC to voice conversion with either the same or different speakers. This table presents the results when the same speaker was used. Note that for this comparison to be meaningful, the latent representations have to be speaker independent. Otherwise, not applying information ball next to the input signal would yield perfect reconstruction. In this case, however, we would have a speaker dependence in the latents and voice conversion would not be possible. To see whether the PESC was correlated with the mean opinion score, a small subjective evaluation was conducted. The PESC was indeed correlated with the subjective score in the first three cases, that is, on models training under construction. However, there was no correlation for the model with end-to-end -end training. Note that in this case the score is significantly lower, but the models have perceptually similar quality. We believe that this is due to the ill posed nature of the task. The end-to-end -end model can learn other valid outputs that are not necessarily equal to the input. Here we present the subjective results that correspond to the cross-lingual voice conversion task of the voice conversion challenge. First of all, we present the quality results, where FASVC outperforms the two baselines of the voice conversion challenge. Here are the similarity results for the same task. Note that in this case, FASVC performs worse than the average. We justify this because FASVC uses several datasets. In particular, we use the voice conversion challenge dataset and the BCTK combined. The BCTK has more data per speaker, so we have a data imbalanceness here, but also in the voice conversion challenge, we compete in the cross-lingual task, where we also have data imbalances regarding the language. Let's wrap up by reviewing the original requirements that we had. First of all, we have a simple model that is based on conditional autocoders that learn a speech reconstruction and also don't need any kind of annotations but a speaker identifier. Second of all, we have a fast model that is way faster than AutoVC, that was our baseline. And third of all, despite these two factors, we still have quality results. Thanks a lot for being interested in our work and watching this presentation. Please feel free to reach out if you have any doubt. You can also scan this QR code and take a look at my master thesis in there, but also hear more samples where we compare FASVC to other methods. Thanks. Hello there. I'm from National Institute of Informatics, uh, and I'm here to present our work for World Wars and Challenge 2020. Uh, our system is T07. Um, the name of the title of this work is Latent Linguistic Embedding for Roslingo, that to speak and voice conversion. So if you look at the picture here in my slides, you can see that uh, that to speak and voice conversion could be considered a just different interface to generate the speak with the target voices. So in case of the Roslingo speak generation, it could be the, uh, the scenario in which speak utterances are generated with the voices of the target speaker in the language not spoken by them originally. So this is also the topics of for the version challenge 2020. So we will look at the result of the challenge before I go detail to our, our work. So for task one, uh, with the English target speaker, you can see that our system is among the top 10 with the highest similarity. The quality is moderated, but not the best. But for the touch two, with the Roslingo voice version here, you can see that our system is played thus in a similarity metric. But what interesting here is that it has a huge gap with in term quality when compared with the first and the second system. So the question is, why do they have on high similarity but very huge gap in quality? So what listeners think when they give the Kyle's answer in the listening test? So now I will describe our system. So it's the extended version of uh, our robot system for voice learning. So, um, for uh, the for this system, we first need to 
train a robust English latent linguistic embedding by training a, what we call a text speak multimodal system using the multi speaker data from multiple speakers. So, given a well trained latent linguistic embedding, we can use it to adapt to speakers who didn't speak English at all in the adaptation step. So, in this step, we will turn in the speak decoder and the vocoder to the target speaker. And then we can perform one extra step by only train the speak decoder and the vocoder to increase their compatible. So, that's a, the um a step by step on how can we learn invoices using the robo system so the result of the vocal version challenge so that our system can do gross lingual vocal version so how about gross lingual text to speak so we do extra listening that to show that our that gross lingual text to speak system also have a very high similarity and quality. So it's very consistent with the vocal version as well. And the performance is quite consistent between the English Turkish speaker as well as the Finnish, Germany and Mandarin speaker. So let's hear a sample here. So this is a Finnish female speaker. Parliamentti edustaa Euroopan ihmisiä. So, if we give a test input to the robot system, we have a Ross Lingua Teto Speak system. During the following years, you tried on successfully to get it into production. But if we give a short utterance and input. During the following years, he tried unsuccessfully to get into production. Then it's a, a Ross Lingua Vocal Version system. During the following years, he tried on successfully to get into production. So, our robot system can do both at the same time without having to do any extra step and the performance between the tattoo speak and vocal version is very consistent. And they have a accented like speaker characteristic that we want to explore more in our future work. So you can find more speak sample using the QR code right here or visit my website and find on the relevant material there. So thank you for your attention. Hello everyone, my name is Patrick. I'm from Nagoya University, Japan. In this presentation, I would like to present our baseline system for the post conference in 2020 with static version of the encoder and parallel webcam. And the motivation of our system is that we want to provide an open source baseline system for the VC 2020 that can be reproducible even using only the VC 2020 dataset. And second version of the encoder or CPP itself is a robust and lightweight uh, framework for non parallel spectral modeling, which has a potential for future deployment and use cases in real-world applications. And the PWG itself, our parallel wave gun, is a fast and high-quality non-autoregative vocoder, which can provide convenient solution for a uh, converted speech waveform with higher quality than the conventional vocoder. And the second VA-based spectral modeling itself is a spectral construction model with the VA-based latent regularization where it utilizes the cyclic flow to use the sample computer spectral features to further regularize the network that can, so that it can improve the conversion accuracy and latent space entanglement. And in the development of the PWG in order of coder, we actually use the second here reconstructed spectrum because they have closer trace to convert it than the original spectrum, and they are used to improve the PWG robustness with respect to the feature mismatches. In this case, it's the spectral upper smoothing. And in the conversion, we just used to train multi speaker PWG to generate the converted speech waveform from the converted spectrum. And this is the results of the first conversion challenge 2020. This is the results of the task one, the intralinguals. And we, the, our system is T16, and it can be seen that our system provides uh, um, higher than average speaker similarity and average naturalness. And in the case of the unsupervised methods, we can uh, provide a very good performance in this category. And this is the result for the task two for the cross lingual, and it can also provide higher than average speaker similarity while slightly lower than average naturalness, while and providing very good performance for the unsupervised methods category. 
And for the future work, what we want to do is, first, we want to alleviate the spectrum of our smoothness with a refinement network after the second PAE strains, because this is a very uh, serious issue that can be uh, addressed to improve the quality. And we want to utilize sequence-based modeling and or latent constraint to further improve the similarity. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Wen Chin Huang from Naga University. Today, I'm going to introduce the sequence sequence baseline for the BCC 2020. So we wanted to build a non-parallel system, which is sequence to sequence at the same time. First, from the data point of view, this year's challenge mainly includes non-parallel tasks. And from the model point of view, sequence to sequence BC models have shown to be very good at converting prosody. We also wanted the system to be easy to use, open source, and as competitive as possible. So we decided to cascade sequence to sequence ASR TTS with ISPNN which is a well-documented and rapidly developed open source toolkit. We try to use a lot of public data sets and we show that contrary to the belief that jointly optimizing a system is better, um, simply cascading state-of-the-art ASR and TTS models can give us a very strong model as we will show later. So this is a system overview. First, we used an ASR model to recognize the source speech into transcription. Then we send it into the TTS model to get the acoustic features and finally used a neural vocoder to generate the speech waveform. There are two things worth noticing. Number one is that because the VC dataset is very limited, we used a pre-training and fine tuning technique. Number two, the output of the ASR model are English characters and we optionally convert them into phonemes. For example, um, we did it for Mandarin TTS. The ASR model and the TTS model were based on the transformer, which is the sequence to sequence uh, state of the And for the data sets, we used um, Libre Speech, Libre TTS, and many other data sets that are um, publicly available. Finally, we used the parallel wave scan because it is a real time neural vocoder. So we ranked about the top third in terms of naturalness in task one, and we ranked the second in terms of similarity, which shows that. Um, indeed, sequence sequence models are very good at converting similarity. And um, although that we perform very poorly in terms of naturalness in task two, we could still perform in the top third in terms of similarity. So these results show that our system is very competitive. We list some possible improving directions, including more training data, more linguistic knowledge, a better multi-speaker TTS model, and a better neural vocoder. And so I suggest you to look into the paper for more details. And I thank you for your attention. Hello, everyone. My name is Wen Xin Huang from Naga University. Today, I'm going to introduce the NU entry for the VCC 2020. So we want to use the power of the large scale listening test in this year's VCC to answer two research questions. We start from the baseline system T16, which is a combination of a frame-based cycle VAE conversion model and a non-autoregressive uh, neural vocoder, parallel wavegram PWG. Our team has been focusing on sequence sequence VC recently, and we want to know that how it can outperform frame based VC. And also, we know that AR neural vocoders are better than non AR ones. And we want to know in what specs they outperform the non AR ones. So, first, uh, for task one, we extended the voice transformer network VTN with synthetic parallel data. So VTN is a parallel VC model we developed. It was based on the transformer. And because it was originally designed to tackle parallel VC only, we extended it to tackle non-parallel data because um, task one is non-parallel. Um, uh, what we did was that we trained TTS models to generate synthetic parallel data. So um, we trained a TTS model for the source speaker and a TTS model for the target speaker. And we generated these um, pseudo parallel data pairs and synthetic external data pairs to train the final ETN model. For task two, um, we used the same cycle VAE, but we replaced the original PWG with the weighted vocoder, which is an AR vocoder. Um, also, we used more training data. We used the VC ticket corpus, which contained a lot more data than the VC data set. And we also used uh, data augmentation, which was based on F0 perturbation. And we also used a more complex training flow, which uh, consisted of many fine tuning procedures. And for more details, we suggest you to look into the paper. So looking at the results in task one, we can see that the T23, which is our system, is better than the, the average of all the submissions in terms of similarity by about 20%. And it can also outperform the T16 baseline by about 15%. 
And this result shows that sequence sequence BC can improve similarity. For tax two, um, the T23 system can outperform the average about um, for about 0 0.5, and it can outperform the T16 for about 0 0.6 or 0 0.7 in terms of naturalness. So AR neural coders can improve quality or naturalness. Hello, everyone. My name is Tian Xiaohai. Come from National University of Singapore. I will present our system for Voice Conversion Challenge 2020. This is the joint work with Professor Xielis group in Northwestern Polytechnic University in China. Our submission is a PPG-based voice conversion system, mainly consisting of three modules, the PPG instructor, feature conversion module, and the neural coder. Given a source speech, we first use PPG instructor to extract the content information. Then the conversion model is used to transfer the content information into target acoustic features. Finally, the target speech will be generated by the neural coder. For the PPG instructor, it includes four GRU layers, followed by a bottleneck layer and a softmax output layer. In practice, the output of the bottleneck layer bot the output of the bottleneck layer will be used to represent the content information. Our PPG instructor is trained with a, is trained with a multi speaker English corpus. The conversion model follows an encoder decoder framework. As the bottleneck layer and the acoustic feature is initialized, so the attention mechan mechanism is not used in our model. The conversion model is first trained with multi-speaker corpus. For each target, uh, we adapt the average model with the target speech. The multi-band VRN is, cho is choose for our neural coder. Same as the conversion model, it's first trained with multi-speaker corpus, then adapt with the target speech for each target. As this year's uh, voice question challenge has two tasks, uh, we use the same system for both uh, intralingual and interlingual tasks. For more details, please refer to our paper as follows, for following link. Thank you for your attention. Hi, I'm Zhang Haitong from NetX Games Air Lab. I want to share our paper. Our system mainly consists of four parts. The first part is encoder, which consists of stacks of convolutional layers and fully connected layers. I mean to learn the higher representation from the input features. And the second part is the vector quantization part, which is to quantize the continuous representation into a fixed number of embedding by finding the nearest embedding. The third part is the digital mechanism. It replaces the embedding at the current frames with that at the last frame or at the next frame with a probability of 0 0.12. And the last part is the decoder, which is mainly a WebNet-based decoder to reconstruct the waveform condition on the learned representation and the speaker embedding. Here shows the evaluation results for task one. Our system achieved a most about three. Although the ranking is not very high compared to all the systems, but it achieved the best performance when no supervised learning such as ASR or TDS is involved. And the second figure shows our system achieved a most about 3.28. And it also achieved the best performance when no supervised learning is involved. Here shows the objective evaluation for task one. From the ASV matches, our system ranked the sixth place. And for CMER, it ranked eighth place.
and for predictive modes, our system achieved the most about 392 and 325. For SIER, our system achieved about 20% of ER. We are from Academia Sinica, Taiwan, and this is Alexander Kemp. Today, we are going to demonstrate our systems for VCC 2020. In VCC 2020, we present two different systems for monolingual task and cross-lingual task. Both systems are using the similar concepts. We cascade ASR and TTS structure. For the first task, we change the output of ASR. We replace English words with international phonetic alphabet symbols, which called IPA. Also, we trained our TTS with the IPA symbols. For the second task, since cross-lingual ASR is very hard to be trained, we extend the idea from the first task. We then machine to define its own phonetic token ID. And the token ID is used to train our TTS. In this slide, we are showing the monolingual system structure. As you know, the output of ASR are IPA sequence, and the TTS will take the sequence to generate male spectrograms. And then parallel wave gain will take the male spectrogram to make a target waveform. For a cross-lingual task, we need to train a complete VQVAE first. And then we will take the first part of VQVAE and treat it as an ASR. The output of this ASR will be phonetic token ID, which is defined by machine itself. Second, we will use phonetic token ID to train our TTS. Finally, we cascade ASR, TTS, parallel weight game together, which is shown in the bottom of the slide. Finally, here is our result. For the task one, our nationalist is ranked fifth out of 18 groups. Similarity is ranked first out of 18 groups. For the second task, our nationalist is ranked fifth out of 15 groups. Similarity is ranked 6 out of 13 groups. Thank you for your listening. Hello, my name is Vitor da Costa. This is Federal University of Rio de Janeiro entry for the Voice Conversion Challenge 2020. First, the system description. We use a cyclogram model to perform the conversion, which is a non-parallel morphic model, which we use to convert to noise spectrograms. Then we use a Melgram vocoder to synthesize those noise spectrograms into converted objects. Cyclogram is a non-parallel morphic model based on generative adversarial networks, as a gun has a generator which performs the conversion itself, and a discriminator which judges the converted output. Those networks are trained on an adversarial loss, but an adversarial loss alone is not enough, so Cyclogram uses a cycle consistence loss to regularize the model, which is the distance between the original input and inputs transformed by both forward and backward transformations. Here's the structure of Cyclogram with all component networks. Melgan is a neural vocoder also based on generative adversarial networks. Its generator generates audio from spectrograms and is non autoregressive allowing its generation speed to be extremely fast. Its discriminator is a multi skill discriminator, which is an ensemble of discriminators at different rates, which allows it to analyze both long time windows and a wide frequency band. Is the structure of Melgan with the generator and the multi skill discriminator. And here is the structure of the full system with Cyclogram converting the noise spectrograms and Melgan synthesizing the results. Now for the results, here are the VCC results for English listeners with our system highlighted. We obtain below average results with a quality score slightly below 2 and a similarity percentage of around 50%. Results for Japanese listeners were similar. In conclusion, we obtained below average results for both naturality and similarity, and our own test indicates that the conversion is the bottleneck. The system needed more development, with changes in both architectural choices and hyperparameter training. Thank you.